Hi everyone, um, I'm really happy you can all be here for this investment um, access to finance workshop. Um, as I mentioned in my email, um, we have uh, four of these workshops. The first one is going to be on uh, crowdfunding and we have a really great uh, panel lined up. Um, so I'm going to quickly go through the agenda for today. Um, so first, um, we have the welcome introduction where I will be um, introducing our speakers. Um, and then, um, sorry. And then we'll start with um, Jonas Sala, for, sorry, we'll start with Francesca Passeri from EuroCrowd. Um, so EuroCrowd is a, a network um, of crowdfunding organizations across Europe. So she'll be discussing the importance and potential of crowdfunding in Europe and beyond. Then we'll move to um, Jonas Sala, who's the co-founder and partner of Vakami. Um, and he will discuss crowdfunding for CCIs um, specifically. Then we have Rita Oliveira, um, who will talk about successful crowdfunding case studies in the in the green and blue and CCI economies. Um, and finally, we'll have Duja Garbi, who is the CEO and co-founder of Red Star Tunisie. And she will talk about specifically platforms for green and blue SMEs in the southern Mediterranean. Then after the presentations, we'll have a quick uh, Q&A session where you'll have the opportunity to ask any of our speakers any questions. And then we'll move in, move out into some breakout rooms. So this is where the floor is over to you guys. So you'll have the chance to pitch your um, business idea to our speakers and they will give you feedback. So as I said in my email, the pitch should not be long. It should be one to two minutes. Um, and then you'll get personalized feedback from our experts. And then finally, we'll wrap up um, and conclude. So I will move to introduce our first uh, speaker. So Francesca Passeri is the deputy director of EuroCrowd. Um, Francesca joined EuroCrowd in February 2016, having previously worked for the Emilia Romanga delegation to the EU. She's responsible for advocacy and strategic development of EuroCrowd. So she has a strong background in regional and local authorities, as well as technical assistance. And she's focused on exploring synergies and possibilities for the integration of crowdfunding in European structural and investment funds. So Francesca, I pass the floor to you um, to start your presentation. Oh, sure. Thank you. Thank you, Kirsty. It's really nice to have received this invitation to join you in this session. Um, with the 10 minutes that I have today, let's make it 15 because you are very brief in, in your introduction. But with the 15 minutes that I have uh, in relation to the topic that I will present, my core points would be the relevance Crowdfunding is very relevant in Europe and the import, the potential is huge because with such little time, you know, I could go on for hours, but um, those are indeed the key uh, messages that should be uh, taken from this introductory remark. As you anticipated, Crowd, uh, Eurocrowd is the European association that represents the crowdfunding sector. We have been active since 2013. And because of this privileged position that we have, I am very happy to discuss this topic with you today. So I mentioned that crowdfunding has a huge potential. So we started monitoring the sector and the growth of this instrument since 2013. So it marks now 10 years that we are active on the market. And along the course of these 10 years, we have seen how this industry has grown, structured, professionalized, and supported more and more companies in achieving their targets and, and uh, getting the funding that they needed to develop even further. So this is a general statement. If you have in mind how crowdfunding works, more or less, you would agree with me that this type of growth, it's not possible in crowdfunding if only one side grows. So crowdfunding is a matchmaking mechanism because the companies or the organizations that look to raise funding and the large crowd, larger or less large crowd of individuals that is willing 
to financially support and contribute to these companies or ideas. So in order for the market to grow, we need to witness an increased interest and an increased uh, engagement uh, from both sides. So we need more companies, more organizations that are willing to use crowdfunding as a funding tool, a financing mechanism. But we also need, on the other hand, to have an increased number of potential investors and supporters. And so the fact that I'm stating that the market has grown in the past years, it means that really we have witnessed that both sides from the investment part or financial support part and from the financial request part, we have seen this increase in trust and this increase in numbers. This is mainly due to the fact that crowdfunding is, yes, an instrument that can provide economic advantages. It can provide uh, financial benefits, but it also brings with it a number of other benefits that are uncommon in all of the traditionally available funding instruments. Um, if you think of a traditional bank loan or a public funding procedure, you usually have a restricted number, a pool of evaluators that is assessing whether your business idea is valuable or and viable and profitable or not. And upon based on this decision, they have the decision making power to decide whether you are worthy of receiving the funds or if your project is not going to receive the funds and therefore your idea needs to be delayed. Well, crowdfunding is destructuring this. It's redistributing the decision making power among not just a small group of individuals, but is empowering potentially anyone with an access to the Internet to financially support with what they can. So according to their own availabilities, one specific business idea or not for profit idea in which they believe. And this is the first advantage that crowdfunding has. It democratizes access to finance. It democratizes the direct connection between who has an idea and wants to reach out to the audience. But if we approach this from a business perspective, the fact that crowdfunding has this creates this direct connection between the business and the potential funders also allows us to identify other benefits. And among these other benefits is the potential that crowdfunding has to enlarge the audience, the outreach, the potential clients that each of the companies that use the instrument can have. Crowdfunding can be used indeed as an instrument of market validation. It can be used to identify or assess whether a business idea or a product or a service is has some grip on the market. If it can actually be appealing for the audience, the target audience that we are going to be targeting with our campaign, and even if you know the pricing that we are um, attaching to the product, to the service uh, is uh, suitable and it's in line with the expectations. So this is something that if you think of traditional funding tools, company owners cannot have before they get the funding. So they have to move on paper. They have to draft, of course, business plans and that they have to do with crowdfunding as well. But then before they have they can have that validation from the market. They need to wait either to receive the funding or they have to anticipate costs for production or for the development of the business. With crowdfunding, the opportunity is to do this process, to go through this process while you're still raising the funds. So it's embedded, it's closely linked to uh, the fundraising process that happens to crowdfunding. And the same is in terms of marketing. So another advantage that crowdfunding has is the fact that it, it enables each project owner, each business owner that runs a crowdfunding campaign to actually position the business, the product, the service in the market, uh, marketing wise, and also product wise, of course, while still the fundraising procedure is ongoing. So a lot of businesses that have used crowdfunding to raise funds have found that the cost that they put um, into structuring the communication campaign for the crowdfunding campaign have actually delivered result, results that they were then able to exploit well beyond the duration of the marketing uh, or the crowdfunding campaign. 
And this, of course, links to partnership. The visibility of a company, of a startup, of an, any organization is closely linked to the number of potential partnerships that this organization can have. And partnerships in crowdfunding are fundamental. It's fundamental because it, they give credibility to the business idea that is being proposed because they can also provide some complementarity in terms of skills, competences, or even product development or sales channel that are needed. So of course, being visible or highly visible through crowdfunding, which is an instrument that calls for visibility in order to achieve success, is one of the other advantages that uh, it can offer to anyone that approaches this tool. And then the final advantage, it's not the final advantage, it's the final point that I would like to raise um, today, but I'm sure that then we'll have more time to go through it in the breakout sessions, is the fact that when you build a crowdfunding community, whether you're a business or an organization, you also attract what we can call ambassadors, people that fall in love with your idea, they're willing to finance it, but they're also committed to make it work well beyond the duration of the campaign. So these ambassadors, this community that you uh, actually can gather through crowdfunding is one of the most important assets uh, in addition to the, of course, economic contribution that they get. I have seen in my experience a number of companies that have actually used crowdfunding to raise equity finance, so a financial model. And those that have entered the company, the startup, as investors through equity crowdfunding have then become naturally, so without any formal agreement, the salesperson for the company itself. This is due to the fact that there is alignment of interest between the company that wants to perform well, grow on the market and make profit, and the investor who is also not only providing financial support to buy or purchase or just out of goodwill support some idea, but it's also part of the stakeholder, the shareholders indeed of the company. So the better the company performs, the better and happier each share, shareholder is. And so in this perspective, the alignment of interest, the creation of ambassadors, the market validation, uh, the market positioning, the creation of new sales channels or the acquisition of new clients. Of course, these are all things that are of utmost importance for any business owner, but even for um, not-for-profit organizations and, and any other actor, even public authorities are thinking uh, in these terms these days. So we're going to be discussing crowdfunding, of course, as a source of finance, but please, my, my one request for you all today is keep in mind that this is a new or very, very different uh, source of finance if compared to the traditional ones that are available on the market now. It does provide finance, it does provide funding, but if you structure it and use it properly, it can provide so much more than that. And it can have an impact on not only on the short term in fulfilling the economic and financial need that you have, but also in the long, mid and long term in supporting the development of the company or the initiative and, and uh, the growth of the business itself. So I hope that I stayed within the time. I hope I wasn't uh, rushed through my points. Um, if there are questions, I don't know, Kirsty, how you uh, expected to manage this? Questions now, questions later? Um, thank you so much, Francesca. Yeah, we'll have questions um, at the end. So if you at the end of the presentation, so if anybody does have any questions, please no. take a note of them um, no. and we'll have a chance to ask to answer them all um, at the end. And if we don't get time, we also have the breakout sessions. Perfect. So thank you so much, Francesca, for your um, presentation. Um, it was a really great overview of the importance of crowdfunding um, in Europe. I think everybody learned a lot from from that kind of overview. Um, so now we'll move to our, our second speaker, um, which is Jonas Sala. Um, so Jonas is the co-founder and partner at uh, Verkami. Um, 
And so Vakami, which means love for creation in Esperanto, is the reference crowdfunding platform for independent creators and the largest in Southern Europe. And Jonas is the co-founder and partner of this organization. So they are pioneers of crowdfunding uh, in Europe. And as a result, their, their business came about as a result of the passion for creativity between him and his family. Um, and Jonas will give us a presentation on the specific aspect of cultural and creative uh, businesses and cultural creative crowdfunding um, projects. So I will move to um, Jonas's presentation now. Uh, let I me can... try if I can share it because now yes. I think I, I solve it. Okay. Uh, now you want yes. to? Yeah. Yes, Great. we can see it. Okay. So let's. You want to just maximize it? Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, great. <laughs> okay. So uh, good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be with you all here. Um, so Berkami, uh, we are uh, this reward crowdfunding platform based in Barcelona, Spain, and uh, we are now 12 uh, years into helping uh, creators into making their projects become a reality thanks to the contributions of the people that love what, what they do. Um, what has happened in these 12 years in, in Berkami, we have uh, funded um, uh, more than 11,000 projects already, and they all together, they raised uh, these uh, 56 million euros. And this is all thanks to more than 1.5 million backers uh, or people that has contributed to these projects. And uh, this is like the most important thing. No? That there are so many people willing to trust these, these creators with their projects and, um, and yet build these relationships with, uh, with them to advance their money, to make their projects become a reality, to have some reward in, in, the, in the future. No? And the success rate is because uh, not all the projects that uh, we publish, they, they end uh, raising the money they, they are looking for, but more than two thirds, they, they raise the money they are asking for. And this is thanks to the, to, to the, to the work we do with, with all these creators. Someone from our team is helping throughout all the process, all these creators that we are publishing their, their crowdfunding campaigns helping them throughout throughout all the process. And, and this is why uh, we have such a, a high success rate. Um, so what's the main idea behind the crowdfunding campaign or behind crowdfunding for creative industries? Uh, we believe is this uh, to, to reverse you know, this cultural consumption. Um, usually, if an author wants to publish a book, uh, what he does is that he prints it, he sells it on the stores, and people is buying in, uh, the book in the stores. But in crowdfunding, we reverse this disorder. No? The author has a book that he wants to publish, and what he does is that he is selling it in the crowdfunding campaign, so he can raise the money to print it. No? So people is buying it in advance when it does not exist yet and uh, thus uh, making it possible for the author to publish it. No? Ciao, yeah. Adriano, ciao. Uh, on uh, another example for it would be this, this documentary about Andrea Motis, which is a really famous trumpetist, and they were doing a documentary about uh, his life and his work. And what they were offering in exchange for the contribution was uh, uh, online screenings, um, this DVD, a special edition DVD with uh, some extras that the people uh, could not be, could not see, no, if uh, not contributing to the campaign or special edition uh, T-shirts. In this case, another totally different example of a crowdfunding campaign that we had in Berkami was these panties for for the menstruation. It's uh, some women from Barcelona, they invented these, these panties that you can wear during your period and you don't need to wear anything else, so they are reusable. Um, so they were uh, raising the money to start uh, their business, uh, to have some uh, starting production, you know, to have some stock to sell afterwards in his online shop and as well testing the market for such a solution. No? And there were more than 3,000 women that uh, believed that this was something that was interesting to have. So they were buying these panties on the campaign 
and thus making it possible for them to start their business and to start uh, producing and have some initial stock as well as testing the market for a product like this. No? They were testing the, the selling price, for example. They were demonstrated that uh, there was interest for such a solution and that the price that they wanted to sell it, it was interesting for the public as well. No? So we had some something more gained from the campaign, some uh, interesting uh, insights on the market as well, uh, as well as uh, raising this incredible amount of funds for, for such a product. And finally, some uh, very different example no, to have uh, some ideas of very different projects that can be funded through crowdfunding. This, uh, this submarine that uh, had uh, scientific purposes and was the first one of its kind uh, in, in Spain. And uh, the creators uh, wanted to raise funds to, to finish its construction. And what they were offering in exchange was to put all the names of the people who was bagging the project in the in the submarine, or you could visit the construction site or have an interview with them, etc. Uh, in exchange for the contributions of all the people that uh, made this 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 submarine possible, that now is is fully operational. And it's doing its uh, scientific work. Um, so, how exactly, you know, having this idea in mind, how exactly a, a crowdfunding campaign works? This is a project that it's live now in our website that you can go to berkami.com and you will find it. And they are raising funds uh, right now. And it's a, <clears throat> a project from, from Beirut, and they are doing a series of uh, short films that they want to share in uh, social in the social networks to raise awareness about the, the condom use in the in Lebanon and the Middle East. Uh, so to cover the expenses of this product of the production of these short films, uh, they need uh, these 1,200 euros to cover these expenses of the production of these short films. So this is the main thing. No? You have some uh, financial goal that you set in your in your crowdfunding campaign, and then you have some days to raise this amount. So in Berkami, it's 40 days. It can be more. It can be less. So you have you know, a set amount of days that uh, you have to promote your campaign in order to get enough contributions to raise the amount you need. And how do you raise this you know, this amount? Is uh, by uh, the people visiting the, the website or your website is contributing, choosing from the rewards that the creator has set. Now, in this case, you can have a thank you in their Instagram for 10 euros. You can have early access to the campaign videos before they are published in the social media. You will be the first uh, one to see them. Uh, or they offer, for example, for 50 euros, they offer all the above plus uh, some, uh, a couple books that the creators have written, but they are not yet published. You will be the first one to, to be able to read these books, etc. No? So they are offering these rewards, people uh, entering the campaign through the communication campaign that they are doing on the social media, etc. Uh, contributing, and so they are raising this, this amount they need. Uh, so two things can happen uh, if the campaign can end, you know, the, the, the raising uh, the, these 40 days of campaign. Uh, you can uh, reach the financial goal or you cannot reach it. You know? So if you reach the we work with an all or nothing model, so you have to reach the, the, the amount you set, in this case, this 1,200 euros. If you reach the amount, then we'll charge a 5% for our services and uh, the creator will receive the money and then he will be able to do the project and to finally send the, the rewards to the backers. If you don't reach the goal, then nothing happens. All the contributions are returned to the backers and the uh, author doesn't receive the money and um, they, are, they are not charged anything. No? So it's free to start the campaign. So that's uh, why it's a, a good tool as well to, to test the market, to, to test your, um, your project, because uh, trying, trying it, you know, uh, it's, it's completely, completely free.
Um, and why do we work with this all or nothing model? It's because uh, otherwise the author will be um, will, will have to make his project with less money than he needs. And that would be a problem because probably he won't be able to deliver the rewards or to finish the project and that would be a problem, that would be a problem for, for all the parts. No? So it's better that you have to raise the minimum amount that you need to, to make your project come, come true. So just to summarize this all or nothing thing, that if you reach the goal that you have set to your campaign, all the contributions are charged, the alpha receive the money, and we charge this 5% of the funds raised for our services. Otherwise, uh, nothing is charged to anyone and uh, starting your project is completely free. So uh, moving forward uh, into how to launch a successful crowdfunding campaign, you could uh, do a small checklist before starting your project. Um, for example, you could check that your project is in, advance, in, in, in an advanced stage, you know? so it's not uh, just an idea, it's something more. You have done the production, for example, in the book, you know, it's ready to print. Uh, to the, the moment of starting a crowdfunding campaign would be when you have everything ready and you only lack the funding for making it uh, become a reality. You know? Uh, then you could check that you have uh, this uh, starting community that supports your work, that uh, you have channels to reach this community and to identify potential backers, how to reach them and what are their, their interests. No? With all these checks marked, you can move forward to start your crowdfunding campaign. And here are the four things that you have to take into account in to uh, make a successful crowdfunding campaign. First, you have to set your financial goal you know, that meets the needs for, for making the project reality. Um, you have to set some interesting rewards, as we were talking before. You have to prepare uh, an attractive uh, crowdfunding page. And finally, you have to make a promotion campaign for for this um, for this project, no? because you have to uh, get enough people to visit your project page during the 40 days, so they make these contributions, and uh, you can uh, raise the the money you need. <clears throat> so starting with a financial goal. Um, you have to take into account everything you need to, to make your project uh, come true. So uh, all the expenses, the expenses of the platform, sending the rewards to the, to the backers, etc. No? So in the case of this book, it was 1000 euros for producing 200 copies of the book and then sending it to the backers, uh, etc. Uh, usually uh, the main question we get asked for, for by the creators is how much do you think I can raise using crowdfunding? And it's something that you can ask yourself maybe. No? So a good uh, exercise to do is to take the, the, the amount you need that you have calculated all the expenses, divide divide it by the average contribution that you expect to your campaign. In the case of the book, it will be around 25 euros. So you have an idea of how many backers you need to raise this amount. In the case of 1,000 euros, it will be 40 backers. On the other hand, we have to take into account that during these 40 days, people that will visit the, the crowdfunding campaign, not all of them will contribute to it. No? So usually in crowdfunding pages, uh, the, co the conversion of visits into contributions, it's around 2% or 2 or 3%. No? So two out of 100 people that will enter our, our page will finally contribute, choosing by uh, one of the, of the rewards. So if we multiply these uh, 40 backers by, by 50, which is this 2% conversion rate, we will have that we need 2,000 visits to our campaign page during these 40 days or 40 daily visits. Um, so then what we have to do is to compare these numbers, these 40 backers and these 2,000 visits uh, with the available community that we can reach with our communication campaign the followers we have on social media, the, if we have a newsletter, how many uh, subscribers we have in our newsletter, etc. 
if uh, these numbers are more or less similar to the ones we have you know, available, uh, we can reach using our communication campaign, then uh, it will be reasonable you know, to, to reach this amount using a crowdfunding campaign. So this is a good exercise we can do before starting the campaign to see if, uh, if it's uh, a good idea you know, or, or we have um, good chances of succeeding in, uh, in raising this amount with a crowdfunding campaign. Uh, secondly, we have to set these rewards. As I was saying at the beginning, the main thing we have to offer is the result of what we want to what we want to do. No? So, in the case of uh, a book, where they are offering in this campaign, uh, so the, the book itself with some discount, the book plus some exclusive print, original drawings that appear inside the book. And they were offering as well uh, a special reward for the for the early birds, for the people uh, pledging during the first 24 hours of the campaign, uh, in order to get the the funds, you no, know, to contribute the first hours, the first days of the campaign, because a campaign which is successful at the beginning keeps, uh, you no, know, it, it's easier to to that it keeps. Um, raising funds you know, afterwards. You know, if you enter a campaign which has zero euros raised, it doesn't build trust. But if you see that many people have contributed already, it's easier that you contribute yourself as well. Um, <clears throat> and then in all of them, they are uh, uh, offering as well these stretch goals. What does it mean? That they already reached the, the minimum amount, which was these 1,000 euros, and they are offering extra rewards if the project uh, raises more money. In this case, if they reach, uh, for example, 3,000 euros, they are offering to each one of the backers that has already contributed uh, some trading cards pack, you know, which are some trading cards with all the, the suites of Batman. So in this case, uh, if the project reach more money, the old backers will have uh, a better reward. You know, we will have for the same amount that they have pledged, they will receive the book, but these trading cards as well, for example. So this is a good way uh, for for to involve all the backers, no, to promote the campaign as well. Because if the campaign goes well, they have a better reward for for everyone. No? And uh, as a project is a, a way as well to to promote this this fear of missing out, no? Because they have these exclusive rewards that you can only get in the campaign. In this case, these trading cards are only for backers, so we have to bear in mind when we design rewards for our uh, for our projects, to no? that they are exclusive and they, you can get uh, something that you will not get anywhere else, no? So that people pledges to the campaign because they want to support the project, but because they will get something that they will miss otherwise. No? Um, so the third thing, when, once you have our, our, um, our goal set, our rewards, we have to make this uh, interesting uh, crowdfunding page. <clears throat> Here, I would say that you have to, no, to, to, to use this, this four W's, which is explaining very well what you want to do, no? in this case, the book and showing it in a way that, uh, that, that people loves your project and wants to contribute because no, it, 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 you explain it in a way that it's really engaging for the people visiting the page. Who, no? it's important to explain who is behind this project to build trust with the people visiting the, the campaign, why you want to do it and when, because it's something that it doesn't exist. And uh, so it's important to explain that the, in this case, for example, the, the shipping will start in October 2023. No? So it's important to explain to the people that there is a process behind all this project that the book will have to be finished, will have to be printed and then uh, sent. So it's important to explain when they will receive uh, the, the reward that they have uh, paid for. So finally, when we have everything ready, it's the moment to start the promotion campaign. No? So 
uh, the first three points, it's easy that uh, anyone well, with a bit of work and can, they can have a good rewards, a good uh, crowdfunding page, etc. And most of the projects, uh, I would say that they fail in, in this in this part, no? in reaching the, the community interested on reaching the potential backers. So it's important to make a plan of actions for each one of the 40 days of the campaign so that you have something to do in each day. Use all the available channels to, uh, you have to reach your community and your potential backers. In this case, for social media, uh, newsletters, uh, presentations, whatever channel that uh, you can bring visits to your, to your project page. Um, in this communication, you have to be creative you know, in order that uh, people can share your posts so you can reach other people outside your, your direct connections and be persistent because uh, it's not something that you do a, you know, a publication in social media and then everything is done because you have to be persistent during the whole campaign in order that everyone that might be interesting really receive the, the the message and they enter the campaign if they are interested. And something very interesting is to start the communication with your closest circle of fans. So, uh, as always, you know, your family, friends you know, should be the first to contribute to your campaign because if your mother has not uh, contributed to the campaign, something strange is with this project. No? Um, and as well using, for example, these early bit rewards can be very useful no? to have a lot of contributions at the beginning and uh, building this snowball effect. No? If uh, the project goes well, it's easier that it keeps growing. And setting this stretch goal, as, uh, as I was saying before, uh, then you, um, you, you achieve that you can, your backers no, can become your promoters. So they start sharing the campaign with their friends, the friends of friends, uh, because they want that the project succeeds because they will have uh, some better reward, for example. And finally, uh, and connecting a little bit with uh, what Francesca talked about, the, we believe that, that really crowdfunding is much more than funding, and that's why it's very interesting um, not to use this, this kind of tool. Uh, one revolution is that with a few backers, you can produce almost anything, so you don't have to be very famous or to have a, no, hundreds of thousands of followers, but you need a small community that believes in you. And with this community, you can produce almost anything with this model. Um, you can produce more units using crowdfunding, and then you make the profit by selling the, the surplus you have from the campaign. Um, you can create with your community support, nothing else. You don't need anything. You don't need to know to well, anything else with your community. You can you can fund your project and you can produce. Uh, if you have set uh, the crowdfunding goal uh, well, then you have covered all the all the expenses once the campaign is is uh, successful. So it reduces a lot the risk of producing any cultural pro product. Uh, you can test the market as well, as, the, as we're showing in the example before of the panties. Uh, you can strengthen the, the ties with your community. No? So you have fans that follow you, that support you on social media, etc. But once they are backers of your project, no, they feel it uh, that it's their project as well, because they've been there from the beginning, they've pledged, then they received the book. No, it's a very different experience to go to the shop and buy a book than to contribute to a campaign. And then uh, you, no, you feel that the project is yours and thus you are building a stronger community and having a strong community for a creative project is more valuable even than having these, these funds. No? You can create new communities as well, no? because it's people pledging that has seen your project from the 
the, all the campaign that you have done, that they arrive to the project and then they keep following you and you can keep on creating with them. And it can be a recurrent tool. We've seen uh, thousands of uh, creators in Berkami that they've used crowdfunding 10 times, 15 times, because it's something that can be recurrent. No? You can keep on um, working with your community. And once you've built this community, the second project, it will be much more easier because you just have to tell them and probably a high percentage of this community will contribute again. So that's everything very condensed in 15 minutes or maybe a little bit more. Uh, thanks a lot and uh, looking forward to uh, working with all of you interested in working in a in a crowdfunding project no? with for your initiatives and uh, yeah join the crowdfunding revolution <laughs> thanks a lot okay. thank you so much jonas that was incredibly comprehensive and i feel like you gave a lot of um really good practical advice of how to launch a campaign um that's really great um i think we'll definitely have a lot to Get, that, get our teeth into in the breakout sessions. Um, so I'm going to pass now to uh, Rita Oliveira, who has joined us. Um, so Rita, just a quick introduction, is the Chief Marketing Officer at GoParity. Um, she has diverse work experience um, spanning over a decade, and she now works with GoParity, who are an impact finance and investment app who are wanting to democratize um, sustainable finance. Um, so she will give us a presentation on successful case studies of um, blue and green businesses specifically. So we're moving now from cultural and creative industries to blue and green uh, companies. Rita, I, I give the floor to you if you want to start your presentation. Um, hi, thank you so much for the introduction, Christy. Um, I will uh, share my screen. Sorry, mm -hmm. everyone, I'm so busy. No, no, I don't know if you were expecting uh, him or not. So this is kind of an urgent. OK. Mm, can you see my screen? Yeah, we can. OK, so I will. Um, Briefly, I will give you an overview, a brief overview on GoParity, and uh, then after that, I will give you some examples of the of the projects funded, and I will try to make my presentation as uh, different as possible from the previous one, so we can complement each other instead of repeating, um, because a lot a lot has been talked about uh, on the importance of community and engaging your community beforehand, and I would say this is. Um, one of the key things that must be done, but I will try to complement instead of repeating um, myself again. So now uh, moving on to GoParity, I'm starting with this um, question. I I don't I'm I'm not waiting for your for your answers. Uh, I was I just decided to start with this because this is uh, pretty much the problem we are trying to solve. And the, commun the community we are targeting um, is very much sustainable, um, sustainable driven and aligned with our values. So we work in a um, we work in a slightly different way from most of the crowdfunding or crowdfunding platforms. So this is the message we're trying to send. We're asking people where do they keep their money, and we're trying to educate them and raise awareness on the fact that uh, even though your money is uh, parked or not being used in, in a bank account, uh, it is being lent to industries that might be harmful or, the, or that are not aligned with your individual values. And the fact that if you have 1000 euros stop at your bank account. This is uh, he's a recent study by the Carbon Bankroll Report. Um, it means that this money that is still is causing um, is emitting um, carbon dioxide to the atmosphere uh, due to the fact that bank bank uh, sorry 
banks are lending your money to uh, industries that might be investing in fossil fuels and so on and so forth. OK, sorry. With this context, all GoParity projects um, are aiming towards a transition that we think it's urgent and that we want to um, contribute to. So what we're doing is giving people the power to divest from fossil fuels and invest in, renew in renewable energy, to divest from speculative economy and invest in real economy, to divest from intensive agriculture to and invest in regenerative agriculture, and to divest in uh, from fast fashion and invest in circular fashion. Okay, these are some of the industries we are um, funding, but this does not mean that we um, from the start exclude uh, any industry. So our motto is a do no harm motto. Okay, so you might be. Um, a social business, and that would be pretty obvious and pretty immediate, the fact that you are trying to contribute to a certain change, but you might also be a um, traditional industry that is trying to make a, a transition towards um, sustainable energy, for example. And in this case, we will consider that you are divesting from fossil fuels and, re and investing in renewable energy. Uh, having this in mind, to go parity is, um, an impact finance and investment app that allows people and companies to use their money for good. Okay, we fund for profit and non profit uh, organizations as long as they are promoting projects that are aligned with the United Nations um, Sustainable Development Goals. And our model is not a pure crowdfunding model, it is a crowd lending model. I, I would say most people. Um, would be familiar with this term. Um, the way it happens is that on one side, we have people and organizations that invest through a loan, but this means by lending money to projects or organizations that are promoting sustainable projects. Uh, the organizations invest this money in their projects and then they pay back the money with principal. And in this sense, we work in a slightly different way as a traditional crowdfunding, uh, because in every project we already kick off with a perk, the perk being the principle that the promoter is paying. So it's not a pure crowdfunding model uh, per se. Um, and this is this is uh, the journey. Uh, gathering all of this, we have the impact, meaning that we will not fund any project that is not contributing to uh, sustainable development. Uh, now, looking on to the types of projects that we that we fund. Um, the way we divide these projects, this is a category developed by us, and this category refers not to the companies but to the projects. Meaning that you might be, you might be. Uh, imagine you are a school, but you are investing in solar energy for self-consumption. As a school and as, as an, an educational pro, uh, program, you would be considered social economy. But that's not what we are evaluating in terms of impacts. If you are a school investing in solar energy, then you would fit in the sustainable energy category. In this graph, you can more or less see how is our um, landing uh, landscape or our portfolio division. The biggest chunk uh, of our portfolio refers to sustainable energy projects. And in this sense, we could have as I mentioned, sustainable energy, but we could also have um, energy efficiency uh, projects. We could have uh, wind power, uh, electric mobility also fits here, for example. Then the second one would be business in transition. And in this sense, this is this could be the example I gave before. Imagine you are um, a traditional company that is making uh, a change towards um, an equipment that will help you save uh, more water resources, for example. But in the sense that you start as a traditional company, but you're making this transition that is um, good for uh, the world, let's say, then you would fit here in the business in transition. 
Um, the third one would be water and blue economy. Uh, in this category, we have um, water management. We could have water management pro uh, projects, but we could have, for example, sustainable aquaculture. I will refer to some specific examples um, in the end. Final, sustain, finally, so social economy. Uh, the most interesting cases or more relevant here would be educational projects but we have we also have some product some projects with uh rural co cooperatives for example in south america and the smallest chunk is green use of lands we would love to see this grow actually but the reason why I believe uh, most most of our projects here are reforestation projects which are very interesting but are projects that are uh sometimes very dependent on subsidies and in the sense the crowd lending uh, model might not be as interesting in the sense that the company or the organization itself would have to pay back the money with uh, interest uh, this is where we are based worldwide although we can only fund companies that are based in europe we can fund projects all around the world so when you see colombia ecuador peru brazil uh, the companies that promote the projects happening um, in these continents are based for example in the uk in ireland or in sweden i would say okay but we have no limitations in terms of project location uh, and to give you also a brief overview, this is more or less um, our current numbers. We have 35,000 um, platform users. When we mention platform users, we are referring to investors. They can be individuals or companies or potential investors. Some people might not have invested uh, yet. We have funded uh, 260 campaigns. Uh, we have 130 promoters and this relation is important because of something that has been uh, refer referred before. Uh, sometimes promoters come to us and they tell us, look, we want to fund uh, or we want to raise 1 million euros, for example. And we know that our community at the moment cannot absorb 1 million euros in one campaign. So sometimes what we can do is we can recommend promoters to split this um, funding need uh, into several campaigns, which is why on average you can see that uh, each promoter has had two campaigns, more or less, round numbers. Um, we have around 24 million euros invested, uh, paid back uh, around 8 million euros to investors. Our average interest rate is the average interest rate that is paid to investors. We have investors from 70, uh, 70 nationalities and our largest campaign is 300 uh, euros. I think this number will might be raising until the end of the year to 400 and 500. Okay. But this uh, is important for potential promoters um, for them to know what would be the potential of a single campaign uh, raise. And our smallest campaign is uh, 6,000 euros. And I can tell you that 6,000 euros we can raise into one or two hours. It's it's um, uh, pretty quick. Uh, I was just checking the time. Yeah, I, I will give you this and then move on with uh, uh, one or two examples. As I started by saying, besides the financial uh, return, for all projects, we make an impact measurement and an impact assessment throughout the project implementation. And given the fact that we are targeting um, impact-driven um, investors. This is uh, as relevant for us as risk measurement or risk um, evaluation. And we've come to realize that for the promoters themselves, sometimes when we fund the promoter for the first time, the actual company has never made an impact measurement before. So this kind of comes as a perk for the company, the company that is um, trying to raise money. Some of the ways that we measure impact, we have much, much uh, more metrics. We have dozens of metrics, but these are the five metrics that we have standardized um, throughout time. We will have 
probably uh, double these by the end of the of the year, and they might be jobs created, clean energy um, generated, uh, people impacted, and when we are talking about people impacted, it could be people in vulnerable situations, women in leadership positions, um, uh, elderly people. Um, there's a lot, so this this one in particular has um, dozens of subgroups. Then we also measure for all sustainable energy projects the uh, CO2 avoided every year. And we also measure sustainable water and uh, land management. And the most obvious example would be reforestation projects, of course, uh, in uh, land management, but sustainable water. I can give you an example of, for example, sustainable aquaculture um, in the south of Portugal, and we measure the acres of sea um, farming in this case. Uh, now, very quickly, sorry, let me move. close this presentation. OK, um, I just wanted to give you uh, an highlight of um, two or three projects. Um, and I was I will focus more on sustainable energy because I know the target would be on would be more on sustainable energy and water and blue economy. OK, uh, as I mentioned before, all our projects are categorized, ac categorized according to one of these categories. Uh, very briefly, you can see their financial conditions here as an investors. You can see that we have projects that go from 20K to 300K, so it's very diverse. And on the financial conditions, what we know is that our community is very much uh, looking uh, for uh, short term projects. OK, so if we are funding a project of up to one year, for example, it will go up in um, in a couple of days. And to, again, to complement the previous presentation. Uh, knowing that the promoter is always engaging with their community and excluding this part because the promoter community reacts to different uh, stimulus that our Go parity community and our current investors. So basically, what we do in every campaign is we try to um, uh, mix or mingle or uh, mix. Maybe maybe would be the best word. Mix these two community communities, and probably the promoter community will be more uh, sentimental, more engaged, and will look and will look less on the on the uh, financial uh, return. Our community pretty much our financial focused community will pretty much be looking at term and uh, interest rates. OK, so interest rates above 5 percent will disappear quickly. Um, loan terms below one year where this will disappear very quickly. When you enter into uh, each project page, we have the storytelling and this is for the investors that want to go be uh, um, that want to go further and want to analyze more than just the financial conditions that we have here. So we would have the project description um, where the idea is to very briefly describe how the funds will be used. Again, as I mentioned, we have the impact measurement and we will work with a company on how to measure this impact. You can probably recognize the impact metrics here, but we also identify what are the sustainable development goal goals that the project is contributing to. Then we have the financial viability and the answer we're trying to, um, the question we're trying to answer here is how will the promoter be able to pay back the money? Uh, we, also, we always have attached uh, financial information regarding the project itself. We may or may not have guarantees. And then this would be the project information. And in the second sec section, we have the promoter information. And this in this case, we are talking about the company. One thing that we realize after making a lot of um, 
in the research is that investors respond very respond very very positively for example to the fact that we have the faces of the team behind the company because it gives them trust to invest in the actual company to know that these people exist that they have linkedin that they have a uh, uh, an historical uh, work experience or educational academic experience, um, you name it. So this, um, this sorry, this section contributed um, a lot to improving uh, trustworthiness. Then we have the business model, um, and here this project in particular doesn't have a lot of updates because it's um, a recent project. But this is the place where we keep updating investors after the project is funded and this is uh it's i i would not call it an area within go parity but it's something that has become more and more important especially for um promoters that want to fund more campaigns and we've also seen this happening we have promoters that have funded uh, 15 campaigns with GoParity and instead we were trying to understand okay how will this happen because investors could uh, um, react in two different ways they would either either feel bored uh, because they think okay I've seen this I don't want to invest anymore or they could gain confidence because they can they can see that this company is uh, paying back the previous project so probably this will give them confidence to invest more and what we've realized that is this that this section in the project updates gives investors a lot of confidence not only to reinvest in the same promoter but also in other projects in general because trust in promoters is also trust um with uh go parity uh Okay, I could talk for a lot more time, but actually I don't have, uh, I'm uh, pretty limited in terms of time, so I will have to probably close now, Christy. I don't know if someone has any question or not. Yeah, thank you so much, Rita. I think if anybody does have any questions for Rita, please feel free to, to ask them now as she won't be joining for the breakout room. So feel free to raise your hand or just open your microphone um, if you have any questions for Rita and Go Parity. Okay, I see Marwa, do you want to open your microphone? Yes, uh, thank you very much, Rita. Uh, can I ask you, how can our companies in North Africa um, uh, um, uh, benefit from your uh, services you approve. How can, sorry, I didn't understand the first question. Our how can we established in North Africa, Egypt and Tunisia? How can yes. we uh, mm -hmm. benefit from your services? Uh, OK, basically what we we've we have had that before. We've had, uh, for example, recently a company based in Mexico that wanted to get funded through GoParity because they did not have um, and are, they did not have a platform uh, in their country. Uh, and what we have done in the past is uh, companies can, can create SPVs, special purpose vehicles that are based in Europe. And as long as there is a vehicle based in Europe, Cooperity would be able to um, fund these companies with no problem at all. I don't know if that was the question, sorry. Yes, yes, thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you. Does anybody else have any questions? No? Okay, thank you so much, Rita, for your presentation. I think it was really helpful to see the, the practicalities of, of green and blue um, companies. Um, we really appreciate your time. Um, ah, oh, we have, another, we have another question. Sorry, are you able to take it, Rita? Okay, yeah, please. Sure. Heather, go ahead. Hello, everyone. Thank you for the uh, insightful uh, presentation. I just have a question in general. Uh, is it normal or is it crucial that at the end of every pitch there is a part about uh, asking for funds or only if we are uh, presenting a pitch that has investors willing to do the funding? I mean, at every pitch we have to do some calculations or math regarding uh, what do we need in terms of money or equipment? Uh, I will tell you about our 
individual uh, platform because maybe other platforms don't, don't work in that way. In our case, yes, we need to know beforehand and before each campaign how the money is going to be used. This doesn't mean that it cannot change. We've had in the past, um, for example, promoters raising for um, an equipment, but then they spent the money in something else, they are obliged to inform us. We actually will make that question every six months or every year, and we are obliged to inform investors. Because when we do not only the risk evaluation, but also the impact measurement, when we're measuring the impact, we're measuring the impact of the funds that are going, be, are going, are going to be used, okay? Uh, so if, a cup after one month you decide to use the money on something else, we need to know if the money is still creating the same impact. And the same happens for risk. Imagine that you tell us that you will use the money to, um, I will try to give a very simple example, but to um, hire people. And then instead of hiring people, you invest in marketing. This will probably have an impact in your business model or on your runway rate or on your or on your return for the good or for the better and this implies a new risk assessment on our side go parity okay so before pitching any campaign we need to know how you want to use the funds if after the funds are released you change the um, the you change the um Sorry, you change your Method idea. Method of usage. Yes, yeah. exactly. We need to be informed. Thank you. That's it. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, we have another hand. Um, yep, Joel. Hello, Rita. I hope you see everyone. Um, uh, so, Rita, I have a question concerning uh, uh, Go Party. So, uh, do you uh, do you uh, do you also uh, provide uh, your services in Lebanon? Uh, if you have, uh, if you are a Lebanese company, would you be able to uh, to launch uh, a campaign for a Lebanese company? Uh, yes, it's the same uh, same thing. Uh, we will. There needs to be a special purpose vehicle created. Uh, our risk. Uh, depart risk and finance departments could help you in that in the sense that they can kind of direct you. Um, but as long as there is an SPV created in Europe, we can fund a project or a company based in other in other country. Great. OK, I don't think there's any other questions. Um... Thank you so much, Rita, for your your time. Um, and yeah, we'll keep in touch for for future crowdfunding uh, opportunities. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Okay. So now we will move to our final um, presentation, um, which is by Duja Garvey. So. Duja is the CEO and co-founder of Red Star Tunisia. Um, and Red Star Tunisia is an accelerator um, based in Tunisia. Um, so Duja has more than 20 years of entrepreneurial and managerial experience. Um, and she's joining us today to discuss crowdfunding for green, green and blue businesses, more specifically to the uh, Southern Mediterranean region. Um, so, Duja, I give you the floor. Um, thank you very much. Hi, everyone. Uh, happy to be with you today. Uh, it's difficult to talk after three presentations, talking uh, very interesting presentation, talking about the same uh, topic. But actually, I will try to, um, I will do my best to be a little bit different. Uh, so, did you see my presentation? Yes, yes, we do. Perfectly. OK, I will try to focus a little bit on um, MENA region and uh, uh, 
um, uh, the uh, sector, uh, circular and um, green economy uh, sector. Uh, but I want to share with you some insights, some ideas. Uh, I think the benefits of crowd crowdfunding, we should talk about this, especially for donors, for you to understand how wh what they are expecting uh, for that. For, so for, they, they are for donors, the benefit should be um, a community participation and feeling of altruist, altruistic. They, they want to give back for, for, for sometimes and they want to contribute to the, the development of um, uh, SMEs and uh, startups. So uh, they will be looking for something that they are very personal for them. It could be a territory or it could be also a sector, a specific sector. They uh, they uh, they are expecting also to stay in close proximity with the activities uh, they support. So they are they can provide um, uh, they can provide uh, 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 counseling, uh, uh, networking. They can they can they can be expecting to be uh, very close to you uh, and uh, to see what you are doing on the in, on, in the field. And uh, they are um, they are they need transfer transparency. Um, they 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 can also donation as a tax shield. So they they need to uh, pay less tax, and they can use this donation for that. Um, for the beneficiaries, for you actually, uh, you will be uh, for when you are uh, looking for um, uh, crowdfunding uh, funds. Uh, you uh, you usually have cheaper funds. Uh, you will raise funds from outside uh, immediately and uh, uh, and uh, known in networks. And uh, the, my previous colleagues talked talked about that. Uh, it helps also institution to to cost efficiency and analyze the market in terms of consumer interest and product demand, and this is like really a market study, very important market study for you. Visibility of the company uh, outside and immediate social circles, and we'll have first circles and second circles and so on, uh, and free publicity. Uh, provide uh, spaces for little uh, to know to unknown organization groups uh, raising funds and uh, reduce risk of failure as concept and project as you will be validated uh, as the, the product or the company or service will be validated uh, after if the campaign uh, is uh, succeed, succeed, I mean. Um, there's many barriers in our countries. I'm talking actually about uh, MENA region and um, uh, in Europe, they are very advanced. In the United States, also in Canada, but in, but in Tunis and Tunisia, in Morocco, uh, in Lebanon, and uh, in Egypt, is a little bit. Uh, uh, it's not expanding uh, as much as we are expecting, and well, as much as we want. Uh, and we have two kinds of barriers: cultural barriers, and uh, I'm talking here about lack of trust in fintech startups. You had in Tunisia, for example, I would take uh, the example uh, in Tunisia because I know it very well and um, uh, the the fintech, we are not too much fintech actually in Tunisia and we are fighting and we are lobbying to have as, as much as we can because it will be easier for everyone to this will be financial inclusion and uh, it helps um, and it helps to have like this kind of of um, uh, platform crowdfunding platforms and uh, many other uh, facilities. Uh, we have also a lack of awareness and understanding about uh, digital services and people they don't know. Actually, we are talking about crowdfunding in Tunisia since, since uh, let let me know let me say ten years, but under under today to, uh, until today today and uh, even if you have actually uh, a law uh, regulating uh, crowdfunding and uh, we are expecting to have like for the first uh, uh, platforms in Tunisia end of twenty. Third and uh, 23 and um, uh, early 24, 
uh, people they don't know what is it, how it works, and they are don't they are they're always afraid and they have uh, no um, how, how how they don't understand how it works digitally. Uh, this kind of service uh, digital services security also um, uh, is it's a, it's a, actually a barrier. Uh, they people prefer dealing with cash and you know, know that you are fighting to to de for the caching and it's not uh, it's not actually a success um, and fear of online scammers and this is uh, all over the world it's normal uh, the second barrier is regulation um, as I told you uh, uh, Morocco and Tunisia I think the, uh, specifically the case of uh, Morocco and Tunisia because we was uh, both countries working uh, uh, very hard to have this uh, regulation, this law regulating uh, crowdfunding, and we get it in the same year in twenty in um, twenty uh, eighteen, I think, or nineteen, together in the same uh, the same year for Tunisia and Morocco. And actually, we don't have uh, local uh, platforms um, uh, working from Tunisia and Morocco. However, we have. Uh, I give you the examples of Tunisia. We have uh, partners, uh, Tunisian diaspora, uh, uh, developing uh, crowd, uh, crowd sourcing platforms outside of Tunis in, in, in France, for example. I'm talking about CoFundy and uh, Frequity, oh, I, and I have the, the opportunity to work uh, both with both of them. They are focusing on Tunisia, and Morocco, and Africa sometimes, and uh, we have this. Uh, this uh, the, we had the opportunity before. 2018, I think, to uh, fund uh, to uh, raise funds for some uh, uh, some uh, startups and um, associations uh, with uh, donate don donation platforms, uh, and uh, get, they send money to Tunis. But uh, actually, it's not no more possible before before problems of regulation and of um, security and uh, so on. So uh, what, what happens that uh, uh, in Europe, they are actually uh, looking uh, uh, very, very Europe and uh, all over the world and uh, Tunisia also, we are looking for uh, to to be sure that the people who are sending money and giving money, they are not um, it's not a laundry, uh, uh, money laundry, or, or or perhaps financing terrorism and so on. So we have like, you have, they have to know the customer and set a due diligence, a very long due diligence, a very uh, difficult uh, due diligence measures undertaken by financial customer institution to identify the customer and to uh, to validate that and. It, it's becoming very, very long and very difficult to to get, and anti anti money laundering, as you, as I told you, uh, they are looking uh, really to detect and report suspicious activities, including uh, uh, predicate offences to money laundering and terrorism financing. So this is tops actually. Um, the 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 campaigns the to, to have I mean to put uh, to organize campaigns in uh, um, crowd uh, crowd uh, funding uh, platforms out of Tunis and of Morocco, and uh, we are expecting now in both countries to have like our local uh, crowdfunding um, uh, platforms to to solve these problems. Um, what we expect you can, you have to expect from a crowdfunding uh, campaign is, of course, fundraising money. You will have money, uh, hopefully. Uh, you will have like a campaign for two between two or six months, and you will have visibility behind this. And my colleagues uh, talked about that. Uh, it's very important to understand that. Uh, the, the digital, the, the fact that you the crowdfunding uh, are are digital, they will be they will give you uh, visibility in your country, but also outside of your country. Your country, but you have to um, uh, mobilize uh, people, co uh, community, and so on to uh, to get this uh, to to benefit from this visibility. Uh, you have also, as I, I say, and uh, what said my colleagues, create and activate communities. And you have you have to understand that you are you are you have to count on yourself, 
uh, before counting on the platform um, of crowdfunding because uh, the first people who will be moving to give you money will be your own community, your parents, your diaspora around the world, uh, people you are you are knowing, um, people who trust you, who know you. So you will, you have to, to mobilize the first circle, and then when people see that others are putting money, they can, they can come after that. Uh, so uh, I told you also that it's it's a real market study because uh, if the campaign that, that does not succeed, this is can show you that people they don't trust the product or the service. And you have to perhaps to to review your business model, your your product, your services, and so on. And you can have also potential ambassadors for the for the project, unless uh, the people they will be, put money in your company and they can be uh, your ambassador. They can open doors for you. They can uh, open networks and so on. Um, actually, I want to be very brief in these crowdfunding modalities. You can find, for Tunisia, for example, you have uh, crowdfunding don don donation, uh, lend, uh, lend the crowd lending, and uh, crowd equity uh, in the, everywhere. And we can find in Tunisia when we will have our crowdfunding. Uh, platforms, one pro platform for each modality. We no, never find in Tunisia a platform who is dealing with all this, all, all the, the modality at the same time. And I uh, can give you here some some examples. I'm, talk I'm talking about Zumar, Zumar who, who is um, uh, actually uh, Lebanese uh, platform of crowdfunding, but but uh, they um, they was like uh, co-funding and Africity uh, uh, financing some uh, some startups from MENA region, and I'm talking about Tunisia, Morocco, Egypt, and uh, Lebanon, of course. Um, co-fund is same, but they are the only uh, fo focusing on donation and uh, uh, donation with counterpart. Uh, with, with counterpart, uh, we have also Babylon, uh, which is uh, lending, uh, lend, uh, crowd lending, uh, which is also um, uh, Lebanese, and I think they are working outside of Lebanon because even the regulation is Lebanon is not very, very, very. Uh, uh, very supporting uh, this kind of of, uh, of uh, fundraising and uh, financial uh, 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 tools, let's say. And Africity, Shirki in Shirki in uh, in Morocco, I think, but outside of Morocco and and so on. Uh, I want to let you know also give you an example of selection process. So you will have to prepare, engage, uh, and uh, convince. Actually, a uh, crowd for uh, crowdfunding platform. So you have you have to prepare yourself, discuss with them, and convince them that your project uh, need, um, uh, will be interesting to have it in their in their platform because they are, they will be very selective. Uh, so you have to convince them. You have at at least one month to prepare communities yours first, and then those of the platform. Uh, you will have also to make your due diligence with um, uh, with the platform to provide the document, the presentation, videos, any uh, document needed, uh, and um, you need to provide for the platform to uh, to to prepare the campaign. And then you will take between one and three months to collect, mobilize communities, and then to make the, uh, your fund raising. And uh, you have perhaps between one and seven year to follow up with uh, donors and investors and prepare your exit. Um, here are some uh, some potential uh, data are very really they are not actual uh, but uh, this is what I'm, I was funding and sorry I don't put put the sources here but uh, the potential of crowdfunding uh, in the in the world you are talking about um, ten. ten eight, uh, 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 multiplied by eight or by, by every eight uh, in ten years, I mean, uh, and uh, we are talking about uh, more than uh, hundred mil uh, million uh, million of dollar per year until uh, two thousand twenty-five. Uh, here are some fifth figures about Africa and the um, MENA region, and you are talking about a growth of sixty percent per, per year. 
Um, actually, uh, I will finish with that. Um, uh, we are working a lot in um, in our uh, countries, and I'm talking again about Tunisia because I'm working a lot on green economy and circular economy, and uh, especially some sub-sectors who are booming, uh, like sustainable tourism, agriculture and green tech, uh, waste management, water management, and uh, other um, uh, sub-sectors in group green uh, and circular economy and also blue economy. And we are trying to fund, and uh, it's very difficult the, actually to get funds uh, and all over the world, I think, especially in the MENA region and in Arab countries, uh, to get funds uh, from banks. It's becoming very expensive and uh, getting loan, loans, uh, it's actually not, we don't encourage um, startups and uh, new companies to start their, their life, their life business with uh, loans and with, um, but we are, we are trying to help them uh, understand and uh, uh, benefit from uh, alternative finance like such as business angels and uh, crowdfunding platforms. And we are trying to to um, um, to help them. Uh, uh, we have actually, I have a lot of companies I'm I'm, I'm uh, uh, coaching and uh, uh, working with them, accelerating uh, and let's start. And uh, most of them are in green economy and. Uh, and uh, circular, circular economy. And what we are preparing is to uh, help them, uh, prepare them to prepare, because we, are, we are, will have like platforms, crowdfunding pl platforms, who are, will be selecting this, this um, uh, the company who will, they will promote, um, uh, they will have that to, to, to select the most innovative projects, and of course, who are, the, who have innovative uh, uh, let's say a business model and they have the potential to grow and to go international, for example, and things like that. And also the most impactful projects, like they are looking for job recreation, fighting climate change, territories development, and things like that. Uh, because uh, actually, I, I was saying that that uh, platforms, crowdfunding platforms are selecting the, 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 proje the projects they will be promoting Voting. And the more uh, we are we are seeing, especially for donors, for for donors, they are looking for something they uh, touch them personally. That like they, they, you are working the territories, they want to help on that. You are working on uh, a subject or a topic who who, uh, who which is which will will be uh, which are their uh, own uh, interest. Uh, they meet their own interest and um, uh, and things like that. So you have to to think really how you can you will be what's the storytelling behind or behind your company behind your project your product your services you have to tell a story to to make really a good marketing of your project market your team market your uh, your vision your ambitions your your values and uh, people they will they will be look, looking for something they that are that makes sense for them to put money uh, on this. So uh, I hope that I was not I was not too long. Uh, thank you for inviting me, and I'm here if you have any question. Thank you, uh, Christian. Thank you so much, Duja. Um, that was amazing to have so much perspective from the, the MENA region and really see the potential of crowdfunding um, in these areas. That's clearly very important for all of our um, participants. Um, so now we have some time for Q&A, um, so if anybody has any uh, questions or doubts for any of the speakers, now's the time to, to raise your hand. I think Jonas and Francesca are still joined online, um, so yeah. Okay, Samia, we have a hand there. Do you want to open your microphone? Hello, everyone. I hope uh, my quality is uh, it's good enough, I guess. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, good, good. So, hello everyone. Hope everyone is well. I, I wanted to ask a question in specific regarding Egypt, as a uh, regulations relating to Egypt when it comes to crowdfunding, and because I know that there are a lot of problematic regulations when it comes to Egypt, when it comes to that topic in specific. So, how can a company 
founded in Egypt take uh, يعني be in that uh, form of funding uh, if anyone has any clue regarding that maybe Duja do you want to yeah. answer that Yeah, thank you, uh, Samira. I was expecting this question because I was looking for uh, the regulation in Egypt. I don't have, to be frank, uh, the the good answer, but uh, but I can I can ask. I have friends in Egypt, and I, I can ask for for that. I looked in um, uh, on Google before coming uh, to you, and I don't have any information about regulation in Egypt. But I think I don't. I find um, um, uh, a platform where I saw many Egyptians is go to finance or something like that. I can give you the name of the platform, but uh, it is based in the UK. In my opinion, you don't have actually the law for to, uh, which regulate uh, regulating um, crowdfunding in Egypt. But uh, to be honest, I uh, le- let me check and I have friends. Uh, I can ask them about that and be back to you. Thank you very much. Okay. I don't know if Francesco or Jonas has any um further information on that it's a bit of a no no the, the the only thing that i can add to this is that so we have been supporting the development of the regulation in in the eu and we were aware of different tendering procedures that were published by national governments in the northern mediterranean uh, the southern mediterranean area among which for sure there was a tendering procedure in lebanon And I think to remember something as well in Egypt, but I'm going, you know, uh, by memory, I'm not sure that was in, in the end published, but the idea for the tender that they had published was to basically have a review of the European regulation, the steps, the requirements, the, the, the whatever was put in place, and then kind of create something that was harmonized or as close as possible so that companies and investors would be facilitated uh, between the two sides of the Mediterranean to also activate uh, campaigns and uh, reach out into a wider market in this sense. But this was on paper. Then I don't know if someone has basically gotten that uh, assignment and developed it further and at which point is it in terms of uh, legislative procedure. Thank you so much, um, Francesca. Um, Does anybody else have any other questions for our speakers? Samir, I don't know if you lowered your hand or whether you raised it again, but feel free to open your microphone if you... Yeah. I'll, I'll ask instead of uh, that in easier again. Uh, so is it a good case practice to always go for crowdfunding through a mediator like a website that handles the crowdfunding process? Or is there other ways as well to do crowdfunding like a campaign that is done by the company itself? Which is the better case practice for this fundraising uh, uh, solution? Uh, I don't know who wants to tackle that. Um, Jonas maybe and then Francesca? Uh, well, maybe Francesca, uh, in the in the case of uh, reward crowdfunding, is very different from equity crowdfunding. So about the legislation and everything else, it's two different worlds. And they are very different. No? In the case of uh, reward crowdfunding, uh, there's nothing special. You are doing, as I was saying at the presentation, uh, pre-sale. No? So there's no due diligence or these kind of things. No? So in this sense, it's much more easy. No? But I think the question was more about this uh, equity crowdfunding uh, process. No? So yeah, I don't know exactly. Um... I, look from my side, from my perspective, and here I am fully in my capacity as European Network Deputy Director, so institutional. Um, always go through a licensed or authorized or with a track record. Even you know, in the case of reward, you don't need no authorization, but you still are a registered company that performs that specific task. So always, please, if you don't want to have bad surprises, use an intermediary. So use a platform for two reasons. The first one is that 
if you do it on your own website, since you're asking to a large audience that potentially knows you but might not even know you, it's always less um, trustworthy. You know, when you use uh, someone that is accredited to do this, either formally on or informally, in the sense that they don't require a legal document to validate their existence, that is always, it, it increases the sense of trust. And this was an issue that uh, Duja was also raising, you know, the, the, the trust that there is towards crowdfunding. So uh, that is one reason. The other reason is, also was mentioned by Duja, the transparency and the opportunity to track the financial flows. So if you're a company and you perform this type of sort of exchanges or transactions with reward, yes, you can use it as pre-sale, so it can be your e-commerce, but I'm not, you know, I wouldn't, I would structure it differently. Then I wouldn't be talking about the crowdfunding campaign. In the case of equity or lending, you need to be able to provide those data about where the money comes from, who's providing it. So that is a cost on you. It's not necessary. It's not sufficient to have a lending page and then get the money on your bank account. You have to prove uh, the traceability of the performance. So this is embedded in crowdfunding platforms already, and they are compliant with the regulation that I'm sure apply to Europe and they will ap apply also in other uh, geographical areas in the world. Um, and then the third thing is um, for if you, for example, decide to raise funds on your website, you have to have, for example, a temporary agreement with a payment service provider that can be costly or it can even not work because what the payment providers do is they lock the funds and when you reach the target goal they release the funds to you or if you you know this is roughly how it works but then it, there is always a third party involved so there is always a risk of delays of uh, mismanagement of misunderstanding so i wouldn't go out if i had my own company or my own initiative i wouldn't go out to save excuse my french but a few bucks um, to save a few bucks, you know, from the platform, I wouldn't go and do things homemade, uh, if you know what I mean. I, I would rely on the professionals as I rely, but that is, uh, you know, also a personal approach. From the institutional point of view, I can tell you that it's always best to um, interact with intermediaries. Perfectly clear. Thank you. Okay. Duja, do you have anything to add to that, or you think it's? I think I agree totally with the Francesca uh, with uh, the, the approach, and uh, I, I I want to add. I'm not sure that uh, she didn't uh, talk about this, but the follow up after that, you you it you will be helped by the by the platform to follow up because you will have many many uh, donors or investors and so on, and it will be very difficult. You have to be uh, very. Um, professional when dealing with uh, with uh, these investors and explain uh, them what uh, what you are doing and how you are doing and you will be focused on your business so you will you don't not know you don't know uh, especially especially how to do to follow up with them to give them uh, to help them to, to trust you and to, to be confident what, 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 with what you are doing and I think most of the platforms uh, help on that okay. Thank you so much. Um, I think we'll just have time for these two questions and then we'll go to the um, breakout room. So Marwa, do you want to answer, ask your question? Uh, yes, um, um, can, I want to ask um, uh, Eurocrowd and Verifini. Can Egyptian companies benefit from uh, Eurocrowd and uh, Verifini services and how? Sorry. Yeah, in our case, uh, we are open to, to projects from all over the world. And in principle, there's no problem in, in pledging and opening a project from anywhere in the in the world. No? You have to comply with you know, the re regulations from your own country when you receive the money. Uh, and, and that's all. So in principle, there's there's yeah, you can use it and and 
as Francesca was saying, no, uh, yeah, it's helpful not to use uh, crowdfunding platforms because we provide you know, all the tools necessary to, for a campaign to, to become a reality, and it's uh, it's helpful to be with uh, many other projects. You know? People see that there are many projects uh, raising funds, that there are successful projects. This you know, helps to to build trust uh, for the project itself. You know? Um, in our case, for Eurocrowd, we are not a crowdfunding platform, so we're an association. Um, the services that we provide are generally related to education, support to companies in order to guide them until the point that they can select a platform and then run a crowdfunding campaign. So since we don't provide the core crowdfunding uh, interaction, of course, I mean, anyone can can come to us and we're happy to support them uh, wherever they are thank you so much thank you so much um so heather do you want to ask your question and then we'll move to the the breakout rooms yes thank you so my question is straightforward <laughs> is it internationally uh, a must for the company to ask for fundraising that it, uh, it is a uh, registered one. I mean, me as a startup, I'm still not financially able to register. And it takes a lot actually to do this. And I need to have a bank account. And you know, in Lebanon, the economic crisis and bank issues. So I'm not registered yet. Is it a must uh, that I be registered to be uh, eligible for uh, fundraising? Um, no. That depends, I would say, Jonas, on, on the type of, of uh, amount that you need and the type of crowdfunding that you want to do. From yeah. my side, equity and lending, yes, you need to be registered and you need to have a bank account connected to the company. In the case of reward, and I leave it to Jonas to explain it better, I don't think so. No, no, in the case of reward, it's not, not necessary. Uh, it would be useful afterwards because uh, the, when you do the crowdfunding campaign, is the first step of your of your business. No? So afterwards, you will encounter that you have to sell, you have to make uh, bills, uh, etc. No? So it would be a good start to be registered in order that uh, you will receive some money that it's in exchange for some sales or from some services. No? So it would be useful to have everything set in place before when you start the campaign, because it's the first time, maybe in your case, that you start your business, uh, your business uh, things, you know, that you start yeah, working as a business. So, so it would it's be a helpful. plus. It's not a, it's not mandatory in our case. Okay, so it's a plus, but it's not mandatory. Yeah, it would be helpful for for you especially, you know. But it's not mandatory as a platform. We don't require that you are, yeah, that you are a company. Okay. Can be a person or anything. Okay, I see. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you so much for all of your questions and to the speakers for providing very uh, comprehensive answers. Um, I think we need to wrap up. Um, thank you so much, everybody, for the speakers and to all of our participants, especially those giving presentations. They were amazing. And thank you so much to our speakers who gave feedback and have stuck with us despite being 20 minutes um, over time. I apologize for that. Um, so I will be in touch with you all shortly um, just to follow up on this workshop and keep an eye out on your emails for the next workshops in the coming months. The entrepreneurs particularly, where you'll have the chance to um, get to know some other financial access, access kind of sources and accesses to finance um, later on in the next couple of months. So thank you very much, everybody, and have a lovely afternoon and good luck. Bye, good luck to all. Thank you. Bye.